Welcome to 10 Meaningful Minutes. My name is Lori Lacombe. I'm the Healthy Schools Coordinator in Douglas County School District. And it is so good to be back with you, Aaron Reagan, our lead counselor. How are you? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. It's like uh, one of the few vestiges of normalcy, you know? Because <laughs> we do everything remotely through the computer, so it's great to just be in the same room and to record this again. I know, the last time we did do it remotely, you had quite a beard. And, I, uh, I went a little crazy yeah, with the beard. Uh -huh. Well, COVID beard. Yeah, my wife was really patient with it. Oh, good. She never <laughs> told me to shave it. Way so I go. think she knows the strategy. Yep. Let him get sick of it, and then he'll do it himself, <laughs> so. We were talking about maybe sharing some of our life stories today. Yeah, and I think in light of all the tumult and everything going on, we thought that might be nice to start with a light kind of theme. Well, I think you might remember last, um, this last summer I was supposed to go to India for three weeks on a teacher program, like an educator program, and um, that got canceled. And while I was gonna be in India, my husband had planned a trip to go hike across Rocky Mountain National Park. So I was, you know, kind of up sad. I would say a little disappointed that I wasn't, I mean, it was all for the best, but I was like, so Paul, can I join you? Can I go, can I hitchhike on this with you? And he's like, oh yeah. In fact, let's bring the kids. And I thought, oh God, <laughs> you wanna bring our kids? So we decided, let's ask the kids. And um, two out of our four kids at home decided, we wanna do this with you. So this is an 18 mile hike across the park. You get dropped off at Bear Lake and you end up at Grand Lake. Now, just a little backstory. We are not hiking family. This is, we don't really camp that much, um, but you have to hike in with all your stuff and then you have to camp there with nothing and then you camp, you will hike out. So we did some practice hikes. We got up to about eight miles total before we actually hit the trail. When you hike deep into the depths of Rocky Mountain, you truly see why it is a national park. So we got dropped off. It was a little chaotic and a little dramatic at first because we couldn't get in. And finally, my daughter who dropped us off, dropped us off at a porta potty and we like put on our bags and we started hiking. And you hike up and you get to this, there's just no trees. It's just, just all you can see are white rocks everywhere. And they have these piles of rocks to tell you you're going the right way. It's so cool. So you're just, you're walking, there's all these marmots that are, they come up right near you and they're like, who are you? Why are you here? Needless to say, within a mile and a half, we go, okay, so how far have we hiked? We thought it was like four miles by now. My husband's like, we've been gone a mile and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the kids and we kind of gave each other that look. Um, but we're like, we're, we're not turning back. We are not turning back. So we get up, we get to these, you know, above the tree line. It was so beautiful, Erin. My daughter had a, you know, two blisters by the time we're halfway up. And um, my son, you have to constantly feed him. So we were going through our snacks really fast. And we got to this part where after all those white rocks, all you see are, it's just green, ever, so, so green for Colorado. Little rivers, little waterfalls, elk everywhere, and wild flowers everywhere. And you're just traversing down, and you're just going in and out of this. And it was so stinking beautiful. We literally, we stopped by a river to snack with this huge bull elk on the other side of the river. And we just watched each other the whole time. Got to the campsite pretty late. Pretty, it took us three extra hours. Uh-huh. Got there. We, my son fell asleep <laughs> before we even eight and then we got through it we woke up the next morning we hiked out and right before we got to the end we sat down because every 30 minutes we put on a timer you have to drink water and you have to eat a snack and this last stop um we all look around and my kids are like i'm so happy we did that i feel so good i can't believe i could do that i could not believe i and we like put the hands in the middle and we hugged and we're like, well, we probably got about another hour. And we literally turned around the corner and our daughter was waiting for us in the car. We didn't know we were that close to the end. So it was an unexpected 
trip, and it was probably the best trip I've taken in a long, long time. Great story. Thank you. How about you? All right, so, so this story is from when I was in college. It was 1994, and I was in my second semester abroad in Nepal. Okay. And I had gone in the fall semester of 1993 as a student, and I returned to help run the program the following fall. I have this old friend named Aaron. We've been best friends since fourth grade. And he expressed an interest in coming and joining the group for this kind of culminating experience where we do a month long trek around Annapurna. We do some high altitude research through the University of Colorado. I was able to negotiate for my friend to come and join us. We had all acclimated to living in Nepal, but Aaron, having just arrived, his stomach was not accustomed to being there. And so we start hiking and he's a little bit sick. He's had some gastrointestinal stuff. And over the course of two weeks, it gets progressively worse to the point that he could barely eat. And at one point he just, he, he had to stop walking. So we held up the progress of the whole group. I was really worried about my friend Aaron and I was really worried about the fact that his illness had stopped the progress of this group. You know, we're on this month long itinerary. We start a conversation about an evacuation. He's losing weight, he's dehydrated. We're running out of uh, medicine, which we had brought because he's taking it all. It was just a really bad and stressful situation. And so we put a plan together where three porters would carry him several miles down the trail. Two of them would carry him at a time, they would switch off, and there's an airstrip where they, where they bring in a helicopter to fly him out. Amazing. And it's like this really rugged, beautiful terrain. You know, you're surrounded by like the highest mountains in the world, but the nearest road was to like a, like a two week walk. Uh, we finalized plans to evacuate him, go to sleep that night in our tents. I get up early the next morning and I'm having a cup of tea talking with Juan Chu Sherpa, who's the uh, Sherpa who would oversee everything. These guys are logistical geniuses, just amazing. And so I said to, uh, I said to Juan Chu, well, I guess we should uh, make preparations to evacuate Aaron. And he said, oh, Aaron die. You don't need to worry. <laughs> He's gonna be fine. I said, what do you mean? Aaron die, one of the porters had a dream last night. And in the dream, it was revealed to him that he will be healed this morning. And I fully expect this to be the case. So I don't think we have to evacuate him. And I thought, <laughs> really? Very skeptical. An American, things like this just don't happen. And so I went back to the tent and I watched him sleep for about 20 minutes. I waited for him to wake up, and when he, when he woke up, he, he saw me staring at him. This awkward moment between <laughs> friends, you know, and I said, how are you feeling? And he said, you know, I feel kind of better. I think I can eat breakfast. So I watched him eat breakfast, and it must have been really uncomfortable for him, because I was, <laughs> you know, staring at him, and, and he ate his breakfast, and then he didn't need to go to the bathroom, and I said, do you think you can walk today? And he said, you know, I think I can. And so he did, he walked slowly, but he walked and he kept up with the group. And then the next day he walked faster and he was fine. The dream was, was accurate. Wow. So I love that story for, for several reasons. And it's one of those things that could almost only happen someplace like Nepal, I think. The other thing about it and, and kind of the bigger takeaway for me in reflecting on that is that it's only when we encounter adversity that we have the opportunity to grow a story like this and to have the satisfaction and, and facing a, a real challenge and having it be okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is very relevant to the time we're in now with so much going on. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to share today. I love it. I think we're gonna have a lot of post-COVID stories. I can't wait to hear what our kids are gonna tell us. Right. What was their perspective? 
of it all, like getting five years out, 10 years out, so. And I also think this will be something our grandchildren ask us about. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think you're right. Because these stories will, will go into lore. Yep. COVID lore. So I think we've exceeded our 10 minutes for we 10. Have, we have, we have. Every second worth it though. So thanks for joining us, our listeners. We hope you come back again. Thanks for joining us.